A man working on an oil platform in the North Sea is woken up in the middle of the night by an explosion. Through the chaos, he jumps up and he makes his way all the way to the edge of the platform. It's a very risky thing to jump. Not only is it a 40 meter drop, but there's burning oil and debris on the surface. The water is a mere four degrees Celsius. If he survives the jump, no doubt he'll die of exposure within 15 minutes. He jumps anyway, he survives. And as he's pulled into the boat by the rescuers and asked why he did that, he replies, better probable death than certain death. You see the literally burning platform caused this man's radical change in his behavior. You may not be running for life, but your organization is no doubt facing some challenges and stress every day. And your ability to differentiate between the burning change issues and the day-to-day -day challenges of your team's or organization's life will help you and your company prepare for accelerating change and a new way of thinking. Let's imagine just for a few seconds how much your working life has changed in the last three years, or even more recently in the last three months. What sort of new habits did you have to adapt? What kind of new technology have you embraced? And what was the role of company culture where you work? What we all have in common is that we have all seen how harnessing data can be the difference between staying ahead or falling behind. It's not what technology our companies are using that's helping them stay successful. It's culture. My name is Katarina Hanna, and I will be talking to you today about accelerating your data culture. I have a few examples of customers who are doing this really well. And all of them are customers who view the need for accelerating their data culture as their burning platform. According to the most recent IDC report, where 1,100 organizations were surveyed uh, and people from all levels within those companies were interviewed, we now have evidence that just having data or even a lot of data is not a guarantee of success. You can have a lot of data, you can have the best leading edge technology, you can even have the best analysts in the world, but that is not enough. It's not a guarantee of success. More and more organizations around the world are recognizing that turning data into information, knowledge, insights, and actions requires data culture. So why should you care? Based on this research, business metrics improve as organizations progress on their data culture journey. But changing culture is really hard, and that's when leadership needs to step up. It requires strong vision, determination, and resilience in order to take your people towards it. Becoming truly data-driven requires embedding data into the very fabric of your organization. The aspiration is to get everybody in your company see the value in data, to have the confidence in using data, and to inspire everyone around them to leverage data for better decision making. In Tableau, we believe that there are five core elements that make up a thriving data culture. It's trust, talent, commitment, sharing, and mindset. And a few things really stand out to me here. People are at the core of any data culture. They need to practice using data every day, all of which then comes together in better decision-making. And strong data culture depends on trust. Leaders in data culture believe that all their people are smart and capable they empower people to ask questions and they embrace critical thinking. People are trusted with data in order to make decisions. 
And when trusted with data, employees feel more accountable and produce better results. Let's take an example at Setsure, our customer in India. The impact of COVID-19 have been felt across the, right across the India's agricultural sectors. And it started to create concern about food wastage and shortage of food. And a huge disruption was taking place to their food supply chain. Setsure, together with three other companies, number eight, Krish Hub and Thinkage, came together to create this interactive map where farmers, buyers, sellers, logistics, storage, machinery companies can come together and, and really make decisions that impact their communities and impact people. They're preventing food wastage, for example, and they're responding to this crisis where it's needed most. Looking ahead, Setsure is planning to use this data and overlay it with information relating to crop harvesting, for example, which can help further planning and help governments and communities make decisions as well. Moving on to the second element, people and talent. Critical thinking and data literacy skills are important at le every level of uh, any organization. And to build the right workforce of data-minded and data-capable people, employees need to be supported throughout the entire employee life cycle. Recruitment, development, learning, performance management, as well as rewards. So think for a moment, how does your organization approach enablement? Is it holistic? Are there any other ways you can think of that could incentivize people to take part? One of the hardest things to do in this area is to inspire existing employees to transform. According to the survey report that I referenced earlier, only 14% of respondents say that data and analytics training is mandatory. And so the example that I have today comes from one of our customers in China, Fourfold Wagen. To foster data literacy of their employees and to go along with their theme of transformation, their academy and management services department initiated Transform One-on-One -on -one training camp with more than 2,100 employees registering and 1,200 employees graduating from this four-week program. It has not only helped them accelerate data culture, but it's also aided in nurturing that new mindset across the entire organization. They didn't stop there. They also put in place a support system that operates 16 hours a day, seven days a week, where employees can come and ask questions, answer questions, help each other with data-related challenges and questions. They also implemented a Tableau user group, which is another group of cross-functional teams that comes together to solve data and analytics-related challenges. And to make it fun and to incentivize and elevate and celebrate employees in the business, they've also put together company-wide biz games. And that's really been able to help them nurture the growth of, of employee skill set across the whole business. Some of end users quantified the value in tens of millions of dollars. Their analytics efficiency improved by 11%. And they also saved approximately $1 million in not having to engage third-party designers. But organizations with successful data culture don't just pay lip service. They demonstrate their commitment through actions, through their investments and willingness to change. They go beyond technology. They also consider the processes and the people. And while the ROI of analytics is certainly measured, in the most successful organizations, there's also a strong recognition of the value and importance of exploring unknown outcomes. Executive role modeling and support significantly speeds up 
the data maturity process. An executive sponsorship needs to go beyond the CEO. We have identified three executive sponsors who can really help accelerate this journey and make the changes stick. It's the CDO who sets the vision, and then the CIO and CTO who champion technology and who put in place the right governance models. Then of course, you need the line of business sponsors, the CFO or CMO. Those are your, your role models and champions who will take outcomes and who will share use cases across other departments and they will communicate their wins with other leaders. Analytics champion then will come in and implement your vision in practical terms. Let's take a look at NTT Docomo. NTT Docomo is one of Japan's largest telecommunications providers. And as their services expand outside of mobile phone, they're more interested in leveraging their data assets to have a deeper understanding of their customers. Initially, their approach to data culture was driven from the top. All their executive leaders acted as role models and really championed data and analytics uh, approach and data-driven decision-making approach in, in their everyday interactions. And today, NTT Docomo has over 11,000 unique Tableau users every month. So the entire organization is benefiting from this transformation in some level. They've not only been able to save uh, a few million dollars in cost, but they've also revitalized the work style of their employees and they're automating their labor management system. But challenges worth solving often don't just sit within one team. You need cross-team collaboration, you need partnership, and oftentimes you need to access different types of technology. And people are at their best when they help other people, when they rally behind similar purpose, behind same mission, and they come together the, to better the organization. In a strong data culture, people help each other with data-related activities. Let's take a look at Bank Mandiri. Bank Mandiri is Indonesia's largest financial institution. And in the past, information requests were sent to the headquarters, which needed two weeks to run an SQL query and gather information from different systems. They would then put it into a spreadsheet and send back to the requester. Most recently, the EDM group of Bank Mandiri has teamed up with us to develop more than 600 visualizations and dashboards, improving that efficiency from two weeks to two days. And it's not just that efficiency and time uh, gain uh, that, they have, that they have documented. It's also the fact that they're investing in constant skill sharpening for their teams. For example, the EDM group employees have access to Mandiri University, and all other employees of the bank are accessing data and analytics course programs. Mandiri Tableau user group is thriving. It meets on a monthly basis and it's staffed by volunteers from the EDM group. And they are the ones sharing and spreading successes and use cases throughout the rest of the business, helping the, the, the whole company on their journey to becoming more data-driven. And when you have the light, right leaders and people with a bond of trust, that's when the change of mindset really happens. People start prioritizing insights and make decisions based on facts rather than intuition or hierarchy. Questions and critical thinking is encouraged and outcomes are valued over output. All of this is then leading to exploration and innovation across the entire business. Decision-making becomes data-driven when data is key to an organization's and employee's identity. Take Rugby Australia, for example. Rugby Australia is not new to data and analytics. Their coaches have been studying 
data for many years and especially data relating to performance of their top teams. Recently, they teamed up with Tableau to bring all of this data into one place, which had significant impact on their efficiency and inspired the whole organization to be more data driven. Coaches now are able to spend more time in the field with players instead of in the office, jumping from one system to another. Not only are they able to analyze data relating to health of players and their performance analytics, looking at referee statistics, competitor statistics, uh, data from doctors, physiotherapists, they want to take this to the next level and connect with grassroots, with the community. They'll be looking at data relating to ticket sales, relating to fan engagement, data from community clubs with the ultimate goal of bringing rugby to more fans and making this a more accessible game and environment for everybody. Rugby Australia is not alone. Just like many other customers that we work with, they're able to leverage the Tableau Blueprint. And Tableau Blueprint is a culmination of our experience that we've had with our most successful customers. The framework goes beyond technology. It incorporates people and processes, and it's a practical guide to help you address some of the challenges we talked about today, like community or governance. The Tableau Blueprint can help you navigate the changing needs of your organization and will help you evolve your governance model as and when needed. It's a step-by-step -step guide that will help you build capabilities across the business and turn these repeatable processes into core skill sets within your organization. And you will hear much more about the Tableau Blueprint in one of our other sessions. So there they are, the five key elements of a successful data culture. By no means this is a linear to-do list. The elements are interconnected and very often depend on each other. They represent the foundational changes that need to touch all levels of your organization. And the good news is that oftentimes that does not require a big price tag. All you need is patience, resilience, effort, and practice every day. I want to finish where we started, the burning platform. Our organizations, business, all countries are changing faster than ever before. The macroeconomic factors, geopolitical factors are forcing us to change at a rapid pace. And innovation and resilience are seen as the bridge to recovery. You are the leaders. You are the leaders who will take us to this next new era. And there's no time like today to start partnering with Tableau on accelerating your data culture journey. Thank you for watching. This was Katarina talking to you live from Singapore.